They have young, developing bodies, so they're going to be more at risk from possible toxins or nutritional problems. Children are more susceptible to allergies, three to four times more susceptible than adults, especially children below two years old. Also, children drink a lot of milk. Now, the cows injected with genetically engineered bovine growth hormone produce milk with an increased level of a hormone called IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1. Those with high levels of IGF-1 in their systems are much more likely to develop breast cancer and prostate cancer. Also, a lot of children have to take antibiotics because of ear infections and other problems. If there are antibiotic-resistant super diseases, that's going to have a tremendous impact on children. American companies who release these uh, genetically modified foodstuffs have never done proper risk assessment on them. Monsanto said that their genetically modified soya is safe. Then uh, the FDA uh, regarded that as evidence uh, for its safety. What concerns me is that the health risks of genetically modified organisms in agriculture are only assessed through relatively rudimentary biochemical analysis and short-term feeding trials of animals. And these are totally inadequate. They feed these animals for only about four weeks, sometimes on one occasion I think it was six weeks. You can't do cancer experiments in that time. And certainly they were not fed to animals and pregnant animals to see what happened in the offspring. And certainly biochemistry, immunology, tissue pathology, gut function, liver function and kidney function do not seem to be done. Personally, I have a hard time trusting the five or six companies in the biotechnology industry which now control our seed supply. I have a hard time trusting them because they are essentially the same companies that brought us pesticides, that told us that pesticides were harmless, uh, that pretended to show spokespeople eating them on television by the spoonful. Of course, it turned out later what they were eating was powdered milk because they weren't stupid enough to actually eat DDT. But these are companies with decades and decades of well-documented lying to the American public. Many scientists say that industry research is rigged to avoid finding problems. We need to have good independent safety testing of genetically engineered foods. In other words, safety testing that is not done by the applicant company. I would recommend that perhaps we could set up uh, human uh, clinical trials uh, using volunteers or genetically engineered scientists and their families because I think they are so convinced of the safety of the products that they are creating that I'm sure they would very readily uh, volunteer to become part of a human clinical trial. A lot of information today shows that food influences mood and behavior. For example, a study on three-year-olds showed that 25% of tantrums in the study were due to food coloring and additives added to the juice they were drinking. Also, changes in diet of prisoners and probationers dramatically changed their behavior. A Dutch student took two groups of mice. One he fed genetically modified food, the other non-genetically modified food. Those on the natural food played with each other and acted like mice. Those with the genetically modified food stopped playing with each other, sort of retired in their corners and were very non-social. Also, they were very much more scared of him when he went into the cages to pick them up to weigh them. And one was inexplicably found dead at the end of the experiment. Now, does this mean that genetically modified foods will affect behavior of animals or humans? It would certainly be irresponsible to say so based on a single experiment. But by the same token, it would be irresponsible to say that it doesn't because no studies have actually been done to verify whether, in fact, there's an influence on behavior. There's a school in Appleton, Wisconsin, that changed its diet from the normal daily school meals that kids eat all over the country to wholesome, delicious, and nutritious food, and the change was amazing. They weren't intending to, but when they removed processed foods from the school meals, they removed almost all sources of genetically engineered products. I mention this school in my book, Seeds of Deception, because after about seven chapters of telling the reader about the dangers of genetically engineered foods and all the rat studies and human problems, I figured someone would still possibly have the excuse, well, I'm going to die anyway. I like sharing the clips of the Appleton documentary as added inspiration for people to change their diet. The Appleton Area School District in Wisconsin is taking a community-wide approach to school nutrition. In January of 1997, I visited Central High School as a prospective employee and observed the students that were housed here at the time and found them to be rude, obnoxious, uh, very crude, and ill-mannered. I was 
brought over to the school because the school was out of control. They were having a lot of problems with uh, rebellious students, weapons violation, things of that nature. So they wanted a cop on school premise at all times. We started the food program approximately three and a half years ago. One Friday, the kids were here. They had candy machines and pop machines in the student lounge. The following Monday, they came to school and they were greeted by water coolers and um, healthy bagels and energy drink for breakfast. Since we started the program, the Nutrition the Natural Ovens program, with the complete diet, the balanced diet, I have seen a total change in the students and the environment within the school. It's amazing. Now that I actually have a job here, I was hesitant once again to start and found that the atmosphere is entirely different. The, the students are, are calm, um, they're well behaved. I don't have to deal with the, the daily discipline issues, out and out disciplining of students. That just isn't an issue here. Every year we are required to file a state report. On the state report, they include information regarding the number of dropouts, expulsions, drugs, weapons, suicides. Since we've started this program, zeros is what I have had to report. That's a pretty nice report to fill out. Our biggest problems right now at this school are parking in the parking lot and student tardiness. I don't have the disruptions in class or the difficulties with student behavior that perhaps I experienced four years ago before we started the food program. Now that I concentrate, I think it is easier to get along with people because now I'm paying attention to what they have to say and just not worrying about what I need to say to them. Healthy food has had more of an impact than we thought. We believed that it would help settle the kids down, which it has done, but I think we were surprised the impact it's had on academic learning. Personally, I think I've been able to demand more academically from my students over the last few years. I notice in conference time, a lot of parents will say, you know, that nutrition unit is really making a difference. This is the first generation in history that might not outlive their parents because of health and lifestyle issues, nutrition and fitness. I can't buy the argument that it's too costly for schools to provide good nutrition for their students. I found that one cost will reduce another. I don't have the vandalism. I don't have the litter. I don't have the need for high security. We've cut $5 million out of our operational budget in the last two years. We did 35 focus groups in the community and not one person brought up the issue of you should get back into junk type foods because they see that healthy lifestyles is important. I believe in three or four years every school in the country will be into a nutrition program because the more schools that are going in that direction they're seeing it does make a difference. We've got to stop using our most precious commodity, our kids, to make extra money. Schools throughout the UK have banned GM foods a long time ago, as have schools in selected cities from around Europe. In Italy, in fact, schools are required to serve organic foods, as they are in Berkeley and Palo Alto, California. And around the United States, more and more schools are removing junk food. They're removing the sodas, they're removing the candies. It's time that we extend that ban to include genetic modification. There are four major genetically modified crops, soy, corn, cotton, which is used in cottonseed oil, and canola. Actually, all four are used in vegetable oil. Now, soy and corn have a lot of offspring, derivatives that are found in many of the processed foods that we eat. So it's, to avoid genetically modified foods, it's often easy to avoid processed foods, and you can avoid the two at the same time. Now, there's also Hawaiian papaya, and a little bit of zucchini and crookneck squash, and Quest tobacco. And that's the only genetically modified crops that are currently commercialized. The tomato was taken off the market, the potato was taken off the market, and several other varieties have been approved but not introduced commercially. Milk from cows treated with genetically modified bovine growth hormone are also considered genetically modified. And there are also enzymes and additives 
that are created from genetically modified bacteria or fungus. Now, typically, they're not labeled. Aspartame, which is a sweetener, is one, is one exception. The same companies that produce GMO-laden processed food in the U.S. market produce GMO-free products in the European market. We have a lot of power as consumers. We have to exercise it. We should be asking everywhere that we buy food if their products contain genetically engineered in ingredients and insist that we will only buy products from them that are demonstrably free of GMOs. So we have to get the word out and educate people to describe how these foods may be impacting ourselves and our children so we can make those choices and move the market. Studies show that the majority of people do not want GM foods. And interestingly, the studies also show the more educated people are, the less likely they are to, to feel comfortable about it and support it. And the more, more, the more knowledge people have about it, the less they like it. Eyewitness reports from all over North America describe how several types of animals, when given a choice, avoid eating genetically modified foods. The cows didn't care for it. Uh, we put BT corn and conventional corn in the feed book and they cleaned up the conventional corn and left the BT corn. They did not eat it. In South Dakota, where they leave food plots stand for the wildlife, that the deer won't eat Roundup Ready corn. Our knowledge of genetics is still far too rudimentary and genetic engineering technology far too crude for the release of genetically modified organisms into the environment and their entry into the food chain to be justified. This is particularly important when one bears in mind that genetically modified organisms once released are uncontainable and unrecallable if problems happen to arise. These might be the basis for real, and we shouldn't use, scientists are not supposed to use strong words, but these might be the basis for real ecological and health catastrophes. That's a fact. People who boost genetic engineering are going to have to do a mea culpa and, uh, and come clean and ask for forgiveness like the Pope did on the Inquisition. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we made a mistake and let's start yeah. over. I'd just like to speak as a father. I think that we have to think of the next generation and I would hate for us now to make decisions that prohibit them from making their own decisions later on. I wouldn't like to sell my children's future for a handful of magic things. We're part of this huge uncontrolled experiment. Millions of people are being fed GM foods every day without knowing the impacts on health, behavior, or our children. These foods could be eroding the health of the people of the planet, and the impacts on children could be far worse. With the rise in obesity and diabetes, with the dramatic results in Appleton, with the growing body of research that suggests that GM foods are not safe and should never have been approved, a complete overhaul of our diet and school meal programs is long overdue. Join communities all over who are organizing to remove genetically engineered foods from school meals. To find out more, go to gmfreeschools.org or call the GM Free School campaign at 641-209-1765. By taking simple steps now, we can protect those we love and future generations. <laughs>